Welcome to our webinar, everyone, where we're going to be discussing a pretty hot topic, judging by this large audience I see, uh, modernizing your finance analytic architecture. I'm Linda Hull from the Solution Marketing Team here at Workday, and I'm joined by Mark Smith, CEO and Chief Research Officer from Ventana Research, who spent many years researching and developing best practices for both business and IT. And we have Lisa David joining us. Lisa is a partner at eCapital Advisors, and we'll be sharing her insights and her experiences in working with customers who are early adopters of this modern data framework. Now, before we get started, we'd like to understand your biggest challenge when analyzing data. So we just posted a poll. If you could take a second or two to answer, again, what your biggest challenge is when analyzing data. Awesome. And if we could review the findings. Wow, that's interesting. 100% reviewing data for quality and consistency. Uh, consistency, really interesting. So I'm not quite sure if I, we cut that poll off too quickly and everyone wasn't able to get to it, but uh, it looks like there's a lot around quality and consistency, consistency. Certainly I hear that all the time with data integrity. Okay, so let's get started with the, an agenda here. We have a pretty quick agenda. This is just a 30 minute webinar. I'm gonna begin by sharing why I believe a modern data architecture is directly related to the success of a finance team. And then the real stars will get started. First, Mark will share some research and best practices for that modern data architecture. And Lisa uh, will share the value her customers at eCapital are appreciating as they make that move. Now, last, we're going to leave a few minutes for Q&A. If you have any questions during the webinar, please use that Q&A feature you see to submit your question. If you can stay a bit after the webinar, we'll try to get to as many of those questions as we can before we wrap up. Now, as someone who spent a long time supporting finance as a financial analyst, this image, this iceberg image, represents my perspective on data management. I always had easy access to the most recent trial balance, of course, but when my analysis needed to go deeper than that GL level account level, I turned to the systems group for support. Now I have to admit, I never understood the work it took the systems team to reach into those source systems, extract data, transform it, maybe join and map data together to fulfill my request. That challenge, however, it still exists but it's even more complex. Not only are organizations collecting more data at a much more granular level than ever before, everyone is looking for immediate answers. Now, unfortunately, we don't always have the luxury of waiting for the systems team to assist us. So instead, an analyst is left to do what they can do on their own. And that likely means getting access to the source system, running queries and reports, dumping that data into a spreadsheet where they can use their skills to pivot and filter and, and look for answers. And as soon as they're done with that analysis, of course, another question is asked, the process starts all over again, but likely on a different subset of data. It's clear that data management, it has a huge impact on what the finance team can deliver. Having access to the right data at the right time, not only for that variance analysis, but to drive strategic plans and forecasts, scenario and what if analysis, that all directly affects what finance can deliver. So let's see what Mark has to say on a different approach. Mark, it'd be great okay. if you can get started with a bit of an introduction of yourself and Ventana Research. Fantastic, thanks so much, Linda, and great to be here with you, Lisa, and uh, welcome everybody. Um, as uh, Linda mentioned, I'm the CEO and Chief Research Officer here at Ventana Research, and over the last 20 years, we spend our time researching and advising organizations on how to use best uh, technology best met, that needs meet the needs of their finance, customer, product, across the entire business area. And I've been personally involved in the data analytics and planning market since, uh, well, unfortunately, well, fortunately, since the mid-90s. Um, so been at this for a while, have a fantastic analyst team, research team that looks into how organizations like yourselves are, are using uh, technology effectively, and frankly, no better time to be uh, investigating what's possible with modern finance data analytic architectures. And, you know, 
um, as we kind of get started, part of the, the driving change in organizations is also just coming out of the last three years around digital business, right? And there's so much technological change going on. And sometimes organizations, especially in finance departments, haven't had the chance or opportunity to take advantage of some of these technological changes and the ability to use uh, technology vendors in a more collaborative manner. We're talking about that today because it's important that we use kind of how do we integrate the best of breed, best of, of what finance can do to reach this level of finance and operational excellence. And that's really what it's all about here today is to really examine what's possible and what you and your finance organization can be doing. Now, we clearly in our work looking at different range of challenges that face finance organizations, no matter if you're a controller, or you're an FP&A professional, a finance leader, right? That the whole agenda around digital finance is not just about one topic, it's an array of topics. And, you know, part of this is having the readiness and the ability for the leadership team to set priorities, to drive improvements that are not um, two, three year plan kind of projects, but the ones that actually can have an impact in a shorter period of time. The other thing is that analytics require data. And it's pretty obvious that, you know, both through the polls and our research that, you know, ha being more data ready to ensure that we're actually able to do the analytic computations, create the metrics and the data that's required for all purposes, whether or not that's for planning, it's for reporting, it's part of the close process, whatever that might be, we need to be looking at how do we do that in a more timely manner. And we realize that timely manner means based on what your organization is trying to do. And that might be part of, of how you look at reducing your close process by a, a day or two. Um, maybe it's about how to get the appropriate uh, reporting back out to your business units. All of that requires making sure that you've got the competencies and skills with the data uh, and the tools required to establish that. I'm gonna talk more about that here in a second. We've also found that uh, unfortunately, many organizations, of course, over time have acquired all kinds of technologies, some, some very uh, much in a legacy perspective, and many of these don't actually work together very well. And so we need to be looking at how do we get disparate technologies to be unifying technologies? How do we get the opportunity to leverage our accounting and finance data? And frankly, the data from across the organization that helps us best understand our financial situation. It's also important that we have to be thinking about how do we take accountability for our own data. Finance organizations have the responsibility to manage their data processes in collaboration and hopefully support from the IT organization, but it's also important that we actually make the improvements and take that responsibility seriously and move it forward. The readiness of data is clearly the topic of today and how we actually build better finance data architectures. Um, and many of you, I'm sure you know, um, it is a larger challenge than most realize. And in some cases more than finance leaders uh, realize. And there's so many different roles and opportunities for um, helping making sure that we've got a data platform designed for finance that can support these myriad of, of needs in the organization. Now, also at the same time, we've seen significantly through our research that organizations in finance is looking to actually have a much higher frequency of analyzing data. And clearly our research finds that more and more organizations moving from that weekly, daily, hourly, and kind of ad hoc dynamic, right? We need to be able to go in there and address issues as they come up which means that we can't wait for traditional data cycles. We need to be able to actually have the data processing and support um, to actually be able to have the appropriate clean and quality data um, that's required to support our efforts. Now, we look at data platforms across for finance, across other areas of the business, and one of uh, the people in our organization, uh, Matt Aslett, talks about how organizations are really taking on this whole data engineering, data science, because we have to look at the integration, transformation, preparation of data as a process and not a set of a standalone, you know, tasks and activities that are basically more human dependent. Okay, we have to build what's referred to as data pipelines. And this helps us better um, have the agility to have that data be able to be accessed 
and to be able to support the kinds of, of finance needs uh, in the organization. It's interesting in the poll earlier, we also have over the last 15 years been measuring the challenge that finance organizations face in regards to having that data ready. And data preparation is an Achilles heel of all FP&A teams and many cases have hired data analysts to help prepare data and a lot of it's manual. And of course, once we get into manual processes, there's all kinds of potential quality issues. So we find that that whole area of preparation of data is, a, is where most of the time consuming aspects of actually conducting financial analytics. In fact, in many organizations, it takes significantly longer to get to the data, be data ready um, than actually getting to actually apply the analytics. More importantly, we need to interpret the analytics and then share those in, in a, a whatever particular set of tools, reports, dashboards, um, and whatever kinds of workflows organizations have. Now, we also find that there are significant barriers to the simplicity of just doing good old traditional you know, planning and reporting as well. But if we actually address the data issues, we're going to be in a much better position um, to be able to support the myriad of opportunities to help with uh, you know, closed processes, reporting processes, whether or not those are internal or external, we need to be able to address these. Now, we've also seen here at Venton Research, there's a little bit of uh, how do we need, we need to be more candid about what's required for finance. And um, in our organization, we've talked a lot about how data pantries, the concept of a data platform as a technological kind of component, but data pantries is that, listen, we need to at any time to be able to go and pull particular segments of data and then apply analytics for the particular needs, okay? So it really is around a application data store that's used for finance. And the concept is really simple, right? It's like the pantry in your house. You want to go and actually get different ingredients, different things to actually cook a meal. Well, that meal you're trying to actually cook is just like what you're trying to do with your analytics and your planning efforts, okay? So we need to be thinking about how do we make this easier so that every time we want to go in and have a new use case or a new request for analytics, we're not having to go through the same data related process over and over. We should have that data platform, that data pantry available to be able to support this whole area of being more data ready. Or, and of course, if you're in finance, you've heard all kinds of buzzwords and conversations around data mesh and data fabric, but more importantly, it's really about having that data readiness. So you actually have the technology, have the processes, and you're more focused on the impact of making good financial decisions, be able to share information, work across other areas of the organization to be able to accomplish that. Now, next is that this actual data pantry and this platform being data ready then gets you to the, the merits of all kinds of wonderful improvements that are happening in the industry, right? The technological advancements of things like AI and machine learning help us get into understanding how to apply better predictive use cases, right? We can start to look at trends and projections and start to look at patterns of issues that might be actually happening in the organization. Part of that is then if we have all this data being fused together, we've got the level of data integrity in place, we've got the competencies and skills, we got the structures, then we can actually work on more advanced, uh, advanced uses of analytics um, to be able to actually be a much better uh, steward of using data and driving the insights that are required. I'm gonna wrap up and just say, hey, listen, there are opportunities in every finance organizations to consider and drive for improvement, right? I've talked just briefly about modernization of financial data processes. We've talked about data pipelines and architectures, talked about how do we actually enable analytics and then how do we leverage existing investments and build upon those? That will help us drive level of efficiency and get the finance data that your organization deserves. With that, I'm gonna pass it over to, uh, to Lisa to take us uh, into the next part of today's discussion. Thank you, Mark. Um, you have just made a compelling case based on your research for the what and the why an organization should consider a modern finance data ar architecture. What I'm gonna cover in my section is how this can be achieved. My name is Lisa David. I spent the first eight years of my career in, as an auditor in public accounting, which this 
this experience sparked my data curiosity and passion for finding out what makes an organization profitable. From that passion, I've spent the last 20 years looking at how people, process, and technology provide, can provide those strategic insights to the business. In putting together a modern architecture, each of the pieces need to address the specific functional need, as, as you described, Mark, in the planning and close process, um, the tax process. In a perfect world, the magic would be that all of these pieces are, are working together. However, many FP&A teams, team members, do not live with this reality. This unfortunately leads to nights, long hours, and weekends performing Excel gymnastics to compensate for the deficiencies in the existing architecture. The good news is, um, I'm sure you've experienced over the years as well, Mark, in your research, is with innovation in architecture and the cloud infrastructure now available, we're able to make a meaningful impact to the working day of our FP&A team. So now let's take a look at any given day. One of the fun things about being an FP&A team member is looking forward to the questions and queries that executive team members ask you every day. So I'm sure many of you get, the, even with great investments in your planning tools, in your closed processes, maybe your tax, your uh, um, accounting processes, you still get these ad hoc questions. Um, one example that I love to share is one of my customers came to me a couple years ago with a problem statement. It's a major retailer and in the holiday season, they plan their business on a, on a monthly basis. However, that plan is at a category level. So on any given day, they were getting questions from their executive leadership team on like what the performance was of, of Sony from Prime Day to November 2nd. And, and of course, that day in the life would have been previously to be performing Excel gymnastics to try to give an answer back to that ELT member to go meet with Sony on that, on that perspective. What we're able to unlock today is with the data pipeline and we're able to unlock that SKU location day information from all those point of sale systems at all the retail stores, as well as the e-commerce platform and put that together and give that insight to an FP&A leader so that they can answer any question of their data daily. So now in the holiday season, um, we're able to see from this retailer every, every product down to the daily level of where, what SKU is sold in what store and across all, e all the e-commerce platforms. This has given such a speed to insight to that, to that customer team to be able to answer all those questions. Now that now the day in the life of that uh, question, the FPNA the FPNA team member can answer that question in, in minutes and, and not have to perform the Excel gymnastics. So how this translates into also into their day is that because they have that SKU location day information, they now need to go per perform the monthly forecast update for November. So imagine having available to you not waiting seeing what if you're the category leader and your your job is to give the category update to the monthly forecast you're able to give have that information of what was happening in the last 30 days on the daily level and then put this in put that use that insight to then go into your uh planning application like workday adaptive planning and update um for that mid-morning meeting the updated what if scenario of 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 that uh, month that they're in And also in that same given day, you have an early afternoon meeting on forecasting. And now you're looking for the remaining fourth quarter forecast to be updated. And um, based on industry trends, things that are happening in products. Um, the other thing that's really um, fun from the technology perspective today and putting these pieces together, um, I was in a meeting yesterday where we were actually um, in the Workday Adaptive Planning tool, but we had leveraged daily sales data into the from the data hub into the tool and we're able and providing that insight just makes our fpna team members so much faster at the forecasting process another example 
I'm working with a chemical manufacturer company, company, and they had done, you know, have very great ERP systems, data lake, and modern, you know, um, consolidation and planning applications. However, they still cannot see their AR and AP to unlock their working capital insight. Um, I think an interesting thing on the data quality and consistency um, that we'll come back to is when when we're partnering, when we're partnering that daily pi data pipeline with our insight to our planning tool, then I'm also able to, if we come back to, after I've gotten my bottoms up forecast done, if I just go back, what we're also doing with, with a, a modern data hub is we're actually with that SKU location day information, putting on the predictive algorithm for the revenue so that in the holiday season, we're able to show the FP&A team members, here's what their monthly forecast was from the bottoms up process at the aggregate level at the category. And then here's what the predictive revenue forecast is showing you. But the, the confidence that the finance team has in, because they know exactly what was fed into that algorithm. So there's no mystery to the data science. And I think that's been one of the barriers to success is that finance leaders and the, I, I always say that the auditor and me needs to tie out to the penny and know what was actually fed to that predictive algorithm before I have the confidence in it. And so this data pipeline of putting these pieces together really provides that confidence. And then I can compare that predictive algorithm um, with the with the already existing monthly forecast. I'll come, I'll fast forward a little bit here. Um, also in that given day, the, that same team member has a late afternoon meeting where they need to bring the monthly financial package from October. So with, with a technology alliance with Workday, Workday now has a technology alliance with Fluence Technologies to provide that closed consolidation process to provide those financials in that, in that late afternoon meeting. Just kind of this, I know this is a little bit busy, but just really there's a lot of choices on how we can put this together. Um, but just wanted to share, these are some of the applications that um, exist in the, in the modern finance analytic architecture. And I, what we've talked to spent our time today share, sharing with you in the day in the life is really how we put together um, a, the middle data hub with our workday adaptive planning and then our close and consolidation process. The one thing that I, I just want to share that we're passionate about at eCapital is just you're not alone. We're happy to educate and share, share our customer examples. We've worked with many customers over 20 years. Um, like we started in the blue bubble 20 years ago. This was first generation budgeting and forecasting applications. Everything was on premise. Um, of course, cloud was not even considered an option 20 years ago. And of course, the gray bubble really represents um, you know, what started 20 years ago as legacy business intelligence applications, of course, that have now become very cloud-based and modern. Also, we've added, you know, automation, RPA to enable all of the automation I, you can in the process, as well as the data science. And then the, the, the yellow bubble really represents our consulting and advisory services um, that we help our customers roadmap and really write out the journey to achieve this um, analytic architecture. Just to speed up here, I'll just focus on, I always call this, this is our e-capital bar napkin, as we say it. Everybody, all of our customer teams have their left side of data sources. Everybody's got their ERP systems, their CRM systems, their data lakes. Um, external data has become very important to some of the business modeling needs of our customers. That's all, so everybody has their own chapter on the left. E-capital comes in on the right to really help you design this modern finance architecture. Linda, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Sorry, did the age old thing of keeping mute on. Anyhow, I just wanted to uh, summarize what we've talked about so far. Also, just give you a heads up again, use that Q&A 
for any questions you might have. We're going to be moving into Q&A in just a few minutes. But I do want to summarize what we went over today. And it's really about understanding that the role of fp &A is evolving and it's more reliant on data and data management than ever before. The second point is that traditional approaches aren't really efficient and effective anymore. We need to redesign how we get data into the hands of the people that need it. And the best way to do that is through this curated architecture alongside with an intelligent data hub that can best support your current investments, those investments you've already made, as well as any future requirements that can come up in the future. It's a much more adaptable architecture. So we're gonna ask one more question of you. If you could answer this question, if you'd like to receive information from Workday, about Workday products, Ventana Research, or eCapital Advisors. I gotta tell you, Lisa has some phenomenal stories. I wish we had more time for her to share about what she's seen with her customers across just about every industry out there. So go ahead and as you answer that, we won't put the results up of that, but we'll move ahead and talk about some Q&A. So my first question, I think I'll pose this to uh, Lisa. And yeah, actually let's let's start with Mark. Sorry, I got a few questions here I'm, I'm looking through. <laughs> How do I get started in moving my organization to a data pantry architecture? Do you have any advice on getting my company to buy into that new approach? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, fantastic. Thank you, uh, Linda, and uh, great presentation, Lisa. You know, what we uh, what we recommend is that organizations look at kind of where they're at today. W what is the time it takes to go through these data cycles, the data preparation, data quality, data governance? And if you start to look at how much time has elapsed in the process that you're trying to accomplish, and there's plenty of just simple, simple uh, kinds of of cases that you can actually look at. Once you've done that, you know, the question now is how do you give, you know, how do you reduce that time to look at being more data ready, right? A data pantry is this basically saying, listen, we've brought together the financial data in a consistent manner so that we can be more agile. Um, so it's not about, you know, it, it is about reducing time. Um, it also is about, it, it, eliminating the friction and the frustration and the resources and as Lisa pointed out, you know, the late nights, missing the, you know, kids, you know, kids sports activity or whatever it might be, or having to come in on over the weekend and, and, and get a lot of these extra extracurricular kinds of things done that should just be automated. And frankly, most organizations, it's pretty easy within a, you know, week, month and quarter basis to cost justify the evolutionary step towards having a, uh, a data pantry that uh, it supports the analytics planning reporting process. Um, so we haven't found an organization yet who doesn't have areas for improvement and, um, and looking at ways to not just have the data pantry, but then how do I start to look at the advantages of applying more advanced analytics um, to have better, you know, better insights to you know, future period level kinds of performance. So a couple of examples there to, uh, to consider. Awesome, thank you. This is very much related, so I'm gonna ask Lisa to comment on this one, Mark, if you wanna add anything. Um, but we, we got a rather simple question. How hard is it to implement a data hub? I think you touched on that, Mark, but Lisa, anything from your experience you might wanna add there? Yeah, um, the key thing is, you know, back to that slide of just about everybody having their data sources. I think it's it, the, the answer to the question is, it depends a little bit on what your sources are and what we may need to unravel. And what I mean by that, working with customer teams, I was meeting with a customer last week and they said, yeah, I have basically one instance of SAP. However, I have 56,000 customizations that were put into SAP. So that has to be unraveled to really unleash this data hub capability. So, but if, you know, other customer teams, it, it, it is, what is really nice is there's direct connectors to most of the source systems that exist, and like I said, the only th what where the complexity comes in is what customizations were done. Because the nice thing about this, once you do have this data pantry, is you have every table, so you have top to bottom data lineage. So it really just like it really comes down to like if I have to update something in the original source system, um, if that makes sense. But our yeah. uh, the good, great thing is our customers are ha can. 
uh, go down a journey with the data hub and in a matter of in a very short amount of time continue comparing it to legacy architecture and the way that customers had to do this in the past was like implementing large data warehouses that took years to have production readiness this is literally months and you're using live production data and it's exciting because even the largest companies can have insight in in a relatively short amount of time right and actually i have an extension of that is we're just going to keep going down the same path but i think it's interesting twist there are companies that are dependent on sql servers and many old semi-modern databases how do you blend those and pull data into adaptive it's really that phasing kind of uh, approach anything lisa you want to add there yeah i mean that exists everywhere yet we hear that every that's a weekly conversation so what we're suggesting to make that innovation more modern and support you for the future is to put those data insert those databases get them into a modern data hub and then we'll feed adaptive and then we'll also adaptive will feed back to the data hub so that's how that's how we're really enabling that agility so that as the source systems or you know external data comes into the business or they go acquire companies and add even more general ledgers i can bring that in and then feed it directly to adaptive and then adaptive can feed back to that data hub yeah i'm going to add one more thought to that if you choose the right data hub and and there are options out there but specifically in corda they allow you to be in adaptive or other destination applications and drill right through into that data hub so it's not about you know, two distinct systems and moving data from one to the other, you can let literally be in adaptive, uh, click on a value and drill through into that data hub where you could do that deeper analysis. Um, one more question here, uh, Mark, how about you? Um, how do you make sure this new modern architecture doesn't become old? Well, it's a great question because we've seen lots of transformational projects in finance organizations, but then, you know, they, they it's kind of like, okay, it's a one and done, we got it done, then we let it sit there. And, and the reality is, is that for finance organizations, this needs to be a continuous, um, you know, continuously managed, um, just like you might have continuous accounting processes, you need to have a continuous set of analytic processes that are examining best practices, techniques, uh, modern technological approaches, um, so if you're not, you know, meeting on a monthly basis to kind of have a, you know, finance analytics and data kind of, you know, group um, to ascertain kind of where you're at on the on your roadmap um, and where you want to get to, then you're then you're leaving the opportunity to make the most significant impacts to your organization. So um, it's important, uh, especially in finance organizations that may have become more virtualized to have standing kind of committee, you know, meetings on the goals, the progress, and, and also sharing best practice and techniques. There's plenty of finance organizations who, who are also establishing center of excellences to basically share best practice beyond finance, right? What are some of the analytic and data techniques that can be used um, beyond finance? So that's a, a couple of uh, recommendations. Great. Okay, so now I realize we're about four minutes over time. Uh, there are a few other questions out there. If you do think of other questions or we haven't been able to answer your question, please feel free to reach out. We'll try to answer those questions um, as quickly as we can. So thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa, Mark. This has been awesome. Um, and thank you everyone for attending. Thank you.